Hello, I'd like to extend to you a very warm welcome to this help out video. My name is Tim. I'm a U.S. Service Coordinator here to walk you through the form requirements for completing the NHTSA HS7 declaration form. Now this is for, this one is in regards to ones for importing of motor vehicles and motor vehicle equipment. Now if we look at the top of the uh, declaration, the first box there is port of entry. If you are aware of the port of entry at time that you're completing this, you can put that there. That's going to be, you know, you just want to put the, uh, st the city and state for the customs port that you will be entering, or if you know the port code, you can put that there. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the next box over. So that's where you, and the next thing will be the customs entry number. For this, if you do not know the entry at time of completing this doc, um, we can actually put it in there for you, so that's not necessary. And same with the entry date, we can enter that information as well. It's the next couple boxes that you will need to be completing, which will be, include the make of the vehicle, the model, and the year, and also the vehicle identification number. Now, a lot of this information can either be inside the door, there should be a label there that has a lot of this information. Um, up, up below that, we're going to go down to the registered importer name and NHTSA registration number. <clears throat> now, if this is a non-conforming vehicle, meaning it doesn't conform to the Federal Motor, motor Vehicle Safety Standards of the U.S., then you would need to find a registered importer to assist you in bringing this vehicle in and making sure it conforms with U.S. standards. So, but that's where you would put that information. If it is conforming, then you can leave that blank. It's the same with the vehicle eligibility number. That can be left blank as well. Under that, you put your description <clears throat> of the uh, motor vehicle or equipment. Below that, we have uh, choices of program coral codes. And we do have an additional list that explains these, but it will either be MVS, OEI, OFF, REI, TPE. And next to that, there will be a corresponding category code that you will have to enter as well. Scrolling down, these are numerous choices of which box you need to select. It will be your responsibility to review these, and of course we can assist as well as to what box is the appropriate one to check. Once we're complete with that, we will get down to the bottom. And this is where whoever's completing this doc, they'll be considered the importer of record. Well, the importer. So you'll put the name of importer, which will be the company's name, be the company's address. The declarant is who's completing this, the certifying individual. Declarant's email address. Your capacity and telephone number, meaning your title. And then your signature. The next box you have to pay attention to if uh, the program code that was chosen is MVS or REI, then additional information is required where you'll have to put the actual complete name of the manufacturer and their complete address. Thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this video. We hope the content was helpful. Please do try to complete the forms on your own with your specific transactional details, and then submit it to your service coordinator to review and to obtain their feedback on any revisions necessary.